It was a typical afternoon in the Sainbury's all in South London. There were shoppers bustling around, getting their daily errands done. Then, at 3 p.m., something unprecedented happened. A few alarm bells began going off, seemingly coming from nowhere. They weren't terribly loud, but they were persistent and caught the attention of the shoppers and staff in Sainsbury's. A few people reached for their phones, out of habit, to see what the alarm was all about. No one had any idea that this insignificant alarm would be the harbinger of a crisis so immense that it could potentially be the beginning of the end of the world. At that same time, in Downing Street, Rishi Sunak was dozing at his desk when the alarms went off. Upon hearing the alarms, he asked his chief of staff what was happening. His chief of staff replied that the Rabster had launched a nuclear missile strike against the Whitehall blob. Realizing this was a situation of end of the world magnitude, Mr. Sunak panicked and imagined what would happen if the Infosys shares had crashed and his wife's portfolio was worthless. Just across town, in Escher, Dom decided it was time for him to go on the run. He was angry that the civil service was going to get punished for something he had done. He grabbed his night vision goggles and made his way towards Dover, as he had recently heard it was close to the rest of Europe. Meanwhile, Michael Gove was tucked away in a cracked den on the roof of his department. He was happily puffing away at his stash when the alarm sounded. He shrugged it off and lit up another pipe, knowing that nothing could touch him while he was in his den. Back in Downing Street, Keir Starmer asked what was happening when the alarms went off. Rachel Reeves informed him that it was just an alarm to warn them that yet another MP on the Labour left had said something casually anti-Semitic. She also said that Diane Abbott had confessed to pressing send on a draft full of racist language despite her intention to take out the offensive bits first. At St. James's Park, the alarm went of an hour too late. Spurs were already 5-0 to zero down and the alarm only served to remind everyone that they were supposed to be a Premier League football club challenging for fourth place. Hugo Lloris apologized, claiming he had simply forgotten he was allowed to use his hands. After all this had happened, life went back to being normal in South London. There were no apocalyptic disasters and no one was turned into a zombie. The end of the world hadn't come, not yet at least, and people continued to go about their business as if nothing had happened. Richard Tice and Lawrence Fox had expected the alert to trigger a catastrophic pathogen in the COVID vaccine, but, thankfully, it never came to that. The moment had passed quickly and the alarm stopped just as suddenly as they had started. It was over in a matter of seconds and yet it felt like forever. The people of South London had been subject to a test of their resilience and luckily, they had passed. This is the way the world ends, not with a bang but a whimper.